is Morgan Brown with Wave Imaging Technology. I'm going to uh, show a short tutorial on reverse time migration. This is actually some slides that were excerpted from a presentation given in Denver at the Denver Geophysical Society's luncheon. So what is RTM? Unfortunately, RTM stands for reverse time migration, which is a which is a bad misnomer, because uh, RTM, as implemented today, is uh, not a time migration. It's actually a uh, wave equation depth migration, and a more accurate description of RTM is a two-way wave equation depth migration, as um, uh, contrasting with the one-way WEM algorithms that were typical. So let's put uh, RTM in context with the other um, common depth migration algorithms today. Those would be Kirchhoff, uh, PSDM, and uh, WEM. So uh, WEM algorithms naturally handle complex velocity focusing and produce pretty good amplitudes uh, out of the box but they have a problem in that they cannot record uh, steep dips being up to past 65 to 70 degrees. Now Kirchhoff algorithms on the other hand uh, can image steep dips but they tend to have a trouble with uh, complex velocity imaging with complex velocity structures and take some engineering to produce accurate amplitudes out of the box. So by contrast to those two, uh, to Kirchhoff and Wim, uh, RTM basically solves all those problems. With RTM you get the best of Kirchhoff and the best of WEM. You can handle complex velocity structures, steep dips, and you can get good amplitudes. So the downsides of RTM is that it's uh, pretty expensive and it's a little bit noisier than uh, WEM algorithms. Okay, so this, this uh, animation shows a wave propagating down from the surface overturning because of velocity refraction and reflecting from an inverted salt flank. So the time it takes to propagate uh, this wave from the source to the target is TS seconds and from the target back to the receiver TG seconds. And on the right we see that we have a, a time trace in, uh, in PowerPoint form here. Alright, so uh, the first step in RTM uh, and where we get the name reverse time migration is actually to take the recorded time data, the recorded time trace, and flip it in time. So you can see here that we've flipped it in time. And we actually use that flip trace as a source function input for modeling. So here we go. Let's, let's inject this source function into the Earth. You can see that it doesn't propagate for a period of time. And when it propagates, it propagates for TG seconds to reach the flank of the salt and an additional TS seconds before we reach the end of the source function or the maximum time in the trace. And it's worth pointing out here that if we'd have done this with a, a one-way WEM propagator uh, propagating this wave, that the wave would have been attenuated right about here where the, uh, the angle with respect to the vertical uh, exceeds 70 degrees. All right, so the next step in RTM is to propagate a synthetic source function into the Earth, <coughs> starting here at the true source location. And we also then backpropagate the receiver wave field in time. And in each time step, we multiply the source and receiver wave fields to form an image. And this is very, very similar to, uh, to a one-way shot record WEM algorithm, except that we're operating uh, in the time domain. So here's the key to reverse time migration. Notice how both the synthetic source wave field here and the receiver wave field here are TS seconds from the face of the salt where we form a reflection. So what we see is with RTM we automatically form an image without any ray tracing, without any, any, uh, anything at all except specifying the correct velocity model. We form uh, an image of the salt flank at the correct location just by correlating the two wave fields. So this is the magic behind reverse time migration. Okay, so here's an example. <laughs> this is actually, uh, this is a steeply dipping salt, salt dome. This is the classic spindle top salt dome. Uh, the data here was provided courtesy of Echo Geophysical. On the left we have a pre-stack time migration image of the dome. And you can see in the middle where this kind of disturbed zone, this is where the actual uh, salt is. And what you see is, you, what you don't see is actually on the, on the time migration image, a uh, image of the salt flank. 
and a lot of the image of the steeply dipping reflectors truncating against the south flank are, is also gone. And another thing you, you see is uh, that the faults <coughs> are kind of smeared. On the right, we have a reverse time migration image, which has been converted to time. And you can see that we have a pretty well-imaged uh, salt flank, both here and here as well. In addition to that, we have the uh, some of the very steeply dipping events, which truncate up against the salt and which represent the, uh, the prime uh, prospectivity, uh, remaining prospectivity in this area. In the next slide, we actually, uh, what I think is a little bit more interesting, we move away from the actual salt face itself, and we're now taking an, an oblique view. Uh, you can see here's the, the, the two crosshairs tell us where we're located in, on the surface of the Earth. So we're looking at the radial faults that emanate away from the, from the salt flank. There's some very steeply dipping events here. So let's, again, let's look at the time migration image on the left. You can see in the zone with, or with, with the red circle, these are some the radial faults coming out of here, very steeply dipping events. Um, there are a bunch of faults in here. And when you compare this to the reverse time image on the right, you can see how in this, this top area where my mouse is, we've got about seven or eight little fault blocks sitting in there, which kind of just smear together on the, uh, the time migration image. And as you, as you go deeper, you can see uh, fault plane reflections and some pretty sharp definition of some of these deep fault blocks and, uh, and these are really the key to finding the remaining reserves uh, in, in this area, finding these fault blocks. If we look at a different a cross line view on the time migration image, we've got some, uh, especially down in this zone where my cursor is, some steep, uh, some uh, deeper faults which are kind of blurred, which on the reverse time migration image are very, very sharp. So we see f uh, some weak fault plane reflections and some very sharp fault truncations. Okay, the next example is from uh, Wyoming. And uh, this is a anticline. This is not an overturned or vertical a vertical event like we saw in the salt dome, but nonetheless, it is a, a fairly steeply dipping event, and it's steeply dipping enough to uh, to hamper one-way WIM uh, algorithms from imaging the the uh, face of this anticline here. So on the right, we have the uh, WIM image. On the left, we have the uh, RTM image. You can see the two images are very similar in character. But uh, on the RTM, we've done a better job of imaging these steeply dipping events in here that uh, compare those to the, to the WIM. So that wraps up. And, and I should, again, thank uh, Natal and Gusman Rockies, our valued client, for uh, allowing us to show this data. And that concludes this short uh, tutorial on reverse time migration. I hope you found it to be useful. And uh, don't hesitate to give us a call at 281-556. 5980 if you want more, more information. And again, this is Morgan Brown with Wave Imaging Technology. Thank you.